Hello you Age of Wonders 3 fans, welcome back to this how to play video series. In this one, we are continuing off right from where we were in the last video. We're going to continue expanding, do a little bit of combat, hopefully get this leader in the next turn after Drugal um, declines that ridiculous offer I made. He's just not going to have the money. Um, yeah, okay, so let's uh, let's end this turn and see what happens. Okay, so the, uh, the hero's still here. He stays for a couple of turns before wandering off. We got all our gold back, now back up to 300. And sorry, we really can't afford this. It's true. Okay. So let's buy this hero. He costs 100. Uh, Urkan the Hacker, such a good name. Uh, he's level 1. Oh, he's a warlord. Hmm. Now, officially, the warlords have not been released yet. They've not been uh, made public on the Age of Wonders 3 forums. So I'm not going to show off any of his abilities, but I will be using them. Um, yeah, okay. Now, look at the way I move this guy. As you can see, I'm going to be taking this great farm. And if I was to move my hero up to the army stack, it's kind of counterproductive, going all the way up there and then all the way over here. Um, it's just a waste of movement points. So I'm moving him over here first, then I'm moving the army down to him. And now I still have some movement points left to invade the great farm. I don't know what's so great about it. There's so many great... Oh, okay, they want to run away. Um, basically, this is another one of your alignment options. Um, we let them run away. It's a good action. Our alignment will increase. Or we say, no, I'm going to kill you all. Um, benefits of killing them. We get some experience. Benefits of letting them run. We don't lose any uh, life. I don't plan on losing any life anyway, <laughs> that's the plan. Um, okay, so we're going against fell horses, and they are naturally good units, dedicated to good. So killing them will also get us some extra evil alignment. So we're going to get quite a bit in this map. Now, looking at their stats, the only real thing to look out for is charge. We don't want them to be more than four hexes away from us, otherwise they'll get an extra six damage, um, dealing 14 in total. They've got quite a bit of good health and fire protection. And we have some units that uh, spit fire and deal fire damage. So they're going to deal quite a bit less against these guys. Um, so before we go into it, uh, we can run away. Running away does nothing. You don't lose any uh, alignment uh, or morale. It's, it's perfectly fine. So don't feel bad about doing it. Um, that's fantastic for checking out uh, fantastical locations. You can enter, the screen will pop up, then you can run away if you feel, mm, nope, I can't handle this. Again, you've got your uh, center, if you're somewhere else in the map. Um, and then this button is for the auto combat, and the AI will gauge for itself how much uh, spells it needs to use. Currently, we don't even have any. Um, our new hero does, though. Spacebar to skip. Okay, so the AI is going to make its turns. I'm going to increase two times two speed, because I don't want this video to run on too long. Staring at the, the beautiful, beautiful fell horses doing their thing. Yeah. Okay. So, first thing we'll talk about is orientation. And then we'll go on to the threatening area. Threatened areas. So, hold down the right mouse button and drag it in the direction you want the unit to face. Okay? This is one of the most important parts of the game that so many people don't even know about. Um, it's important because... Uh, and then again, this ties back to, to games like Dungeons and Dragons. You've got the threatened area and the flank area. The threatened area is the three hexes in front of a character. Um, basically, if you try to attack a character within the threatened area, he will counter-attack if he has movement points available. And if you attack behind the character, you will get flanking bonus damage as well. That character has to spend an action point just to turn and face you, and he will not counter-attack. Um, yeah, so I guess that's the that's all the important stuff to know about orientation, and then you've got the, the threatening area and the flanking area. Um, but also note that guard, um, a unit in guard, uh, will first of all use all of his action points to go into guard, and also he cannot be flanked. So if I was to face this way, then go into guard, they will not deal any damage to me. However, that said. I will still waste uh, an action point turning the face of them and will not get off any of my um, counter attacks. Okay. What else? Um, 
Yeah, yeah, okay. So, there's two types of ranged attack. There's the arcing shot, you can see that in the uh, tooltip, which will typically always trigger three times. And then you have the straight shot, which will trigger uh, once. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages of these. The straight shot will typically deal less damage. You can see here this will deal 15, and this will deal 8 three times. So ultimately, this can deal more damage. However, um, it ties in with this color coded uh, movement tiles. Moving from one color to another will use one of our action points. And if we have less action points, this will trigger less. So with three action points, three attacks. Two action points, two. One action point, one attack. Basically, if we move our character all the way over here behind a unit and then try to attack them, we'll only get eight damage. That's a third of the maximum maximum amount of damage. However, we can move this guy all the way behind and get off it one attack, dealing maximum amount of damage for this guy as well as flanking damage. Very useful. Um, so you can see the differences in the counters between the two. Also. Um, you've got straight shot and arcing shot. Straight shot will move directly from this character to the target. Arcing shot goes up into the air and then falls down. This is great for getting over things like um, this. So if a character is behind this, uh, straight shot will use this as view this as a target and will uh, thus deal less damage because this is in the way. Arcing shot will shoot over this and hit the guy behind it. Okay. So let's, uh, let's get into the nitty gritty. Now these guys are in guard, so we can't do any flanking, but we can try and see if we can get rid of some counter attacks. Let's see. No, okay. So there's a, a um, gate here, so we can't get behind him, so the only place we can physically attack is here. It's a bit of a shame. Okay. Um, you also, straight away I think, the type of units that you want to gain experience so everyone's going to gain experience by just being here, but anyone who uses an ability is going to gain EXP. Uh, so oftentimes it's a good idea to intentionally deal less damage. This is because, let's say for example, we know we're going to win this fight in one turn. Dealing less damage means we can get experience on everybody. So if I move them into the yellow, deal the damage, then uh, Someone else can come in and finish them off and also gain that extra EXP. So it's that kind of tactics that you've got to be aware of. Um, so we'll heavy crossbow this guy in the face. Poor little horsey. Uh, down to 22 HP. I suppose I'm going a little bit too fast. I'll slow down so you can see the tooltips. So we'll uh, shock bolt. Uh, arcing shot will deal eight, 6 to 8 electrical damage 3 times. So we're not going to wipe them out unless we crit. We did crit. Eight. Six. Eight, eight, eight. Ah, oh, seven. Okay. One HP left. Anybody can wipe this guy out. You can only get here. And again, uh, directly behind a the unit, they're not going to be viewed as a target. And we can uh, splatter this guy. Fire spit. And here we go. 14 damage and we can see above our own unit, the pop-up says the retaliation will be 7 to 11 damage. I like those odds. Okay, so this is our ranged unit. He's squishy. 30 HP. This is our melee unit. He deals a lot more physical damage. Is it more defense? Okay. Uh, so that means the AI will prioritize this target. He's going to come over and try and wipe this guy out. Luckily for us, that means he's going to move through our uh, crusher's area of uh, control, his threatening area, and that means he'll get a attack, uh, um, attack of opportunity on this uh, fell horse for free. Let's see if we've got anyone else we got to move. You uh, okay? So we don't need to press guard. Just end our turn, and everyone will auto guard. Boom. Okay, so the independents are taking their turn, we've got it sped up a wee bit, and like I said, we got that free attack. Um, let me know in the comments if this uh, game speed is a little bit too fast and we can slow it down. So again, got to think, who do we want to get the experience? Our uh, draconian hatchlings will evolve into a crusher, charger, flamer, or elder. Uh, pretty much out of these, the one you want is the charger or the elder. 
pretty much it. I think personally I always want the Elder, um, Crusher or um, Flamer are kind of a waste um, of a gold tier unit. Okay, so we'll give it, get it to the uh, hero instead of the evolved guy because it's a little bit more random. We can choose the upgrades this guy gets if he levels up. Okay. So now we got our reward for conquering this location. Uh, okay, I'll make a, a judgment call and say it's going to be a boar because it's a great farm. Most likely, yeah, find a lot of pigs in farms, makes sense. So will, will we take the piggy and the gold or will we sell it and get the idiot gold? Now, I think this pig is worth more than 20 gold, so I'll take the reward. Now check this guy out. Uh, he's a leg, four-legged animal and he has forestry. Um, and charging, but he's 36 movement points, the exact same amount as a mounted unit, mounted cavalry, 36. So I'm using him as a scout, even though he's tier 2, he's still pretty OP. Now watch the way I move these guys, I never move into the fog of war, uh, because you could accidentally move on top of an enemy army, trigger a combat, fair enough you can just retreat at no cost, but you don't want to move on top of a unit with some movement points, also uh, units that are hiding. Uh, inside, uh, say, forests, if you run past them, they'll only appear for a brief second and then you could potentially miss that. Also, double right click, doing it this way, you auto appear, you get there a lot faster, and uh, doing it by small, quick succession, you don't waste a lot of time. So, for example, I know there's nothing here, I'm not going to miss anything, double right click, there we go. And um, we have a lot of gold, so we can sort out buildings first. Um, let's see. Shall we? Oh, we'll talk about terrain types first of all. So you notice we're going to—I'm moving this guy up. Uh, mouse over. We'll see. This is uh, fertile plains. So base movement cost on fertile terrains is six. It costs six movement points. These guys only have four, so we can't go any further. Optionally, we could take this guy out of the army. Do a wee bit of scouting. Don't think I want my leader to be that far ahead. Mice over these. This is dense vegetation. It costs eight. Now, of course, the computer will auto-path us on the cheapest path to get to our destination, but sometimes you can find it is better to uh, go through some certain terrain, so to get over here, it is uh, easier to go through the dense vegetation. Uh, things like that are always good to keep in mind. Now we'll talk about production. Um, the first tab is producing uh, units, uh, recruiting, I think is a better term, or uh, I know, giving birth in the, term, for the, in the case of draconians. So we know what these guys are. Uh, right click will bring up the info card and you don't uh, leave this screen. Look at these guys all scratching their ears. So you can evolve, if they're a regular, draconian, they heal a little bit faster. That's good for keeping them alive so you can evolve them. Um, battering rams are extremely useful and definitely underappreciated. They are just practically huge tanks um, in the non-literal sense, in like the RPG sense. A lot of HP. Uh, Tons of defense, very good resistance, they can absorb a lot of damage. They deal 16 damage, that's also not just to walls, but also to units. And 16 damage is nothing to laugh at. So wall crushing is an interesting ability. You get it on uh, the battering ram and like certain big units like uh, the horned god and ogres. Basically it means you can uh, use your basic attacks on walls. He walks, he's a machine, so he automatically gets reinforced and cannot regenerate. Reinforced means um, he gets plus 4 defense against ranged attacks, so this goes up to 17, or, yep, 17. And cannot regenerate means you don't gain any HP passively. Uh, complete immunity to Blight and uh, Holy, our spirit, and 40% extra damage from fire attacks. Now we're not going to recruit anything, we're going to do some uh, city expansions or produ uh, production, uh, but we'll come back to that in a few moments. So it's the city options. Uh, basically we've only got two real nasty options at the moment. Um, well, I guess these are always nasty options, they always hurt your uh, alignment. Um, so raise, now this is a useful option. Let's say we've conquered a city, and this city is here. We've no units near it, We've just we just own a city, and we do know that in three turns an army's going to come and conquer it. Instead, we know we can't keep it, uh, let's raise the city. Uh, if I can't have it, neither can you. Uh, it does take two turns and it does hurt your empire morale. 
Plunder is practically the same thing. It will destroy the city. Uh, it takes a little bit longer, but you do get resources for it. Uh, we only get 39 for a outpost. We get more for bigger cities. Now this is the existing upgrades, and it shows you everything that's in the city. It'll detail uh, whether it is the throne city or not. Uh, also you get your race, and at the bottom of the tooltip you can see the stuff that that race likes. So draconians enjoy being on barrens uh, or uh, lava pool. They uh, don't like the arctic, which is cold, icy terrain, and they hate blighted terrain. Now this is stuff that is within the borders of your uh, city. So if there's, uh, say, some arctic in here, then that city's happiness will go down. And if there's uh, lava pools within the domain, it will increase. And that counts the same for your units. So if they are on barren terrains, is there any nearby? Is this barren? Is this barren? Nope. Okay. So if they're on top of barren terrains, they'll be happier. And again, like I said in the intro video, increases their chance for critting and on sad terrain, fumbling. Uh, these are the stuff we have built. You can sell them for gold if you're short. And we start off, every time you start, oh no, 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 let's <laughs> not do that. Every time you start a game, you start off with the, uh, with your classes. Um, structure on your default city. Um, the sorcerer can only produce or recruit one of his units. The rest are all summons, uh, but it doesn't really matter because you start off with this anyway. Um, so let's go back to buildings. Now here you gotta think, how are we going to expand? What do we need? What do we need right now? What do we need in the next 10 turns or the next 20 turns? Um, so I'm thinking I need to expand my city so I can do more uh, otherwise, it'll be a very slow stagnation. Um, but we have the option of going for new units and upgraded units. Uh, more mana. We need uh, some new spells ASAP. We also... Uh, Shrine allows you the option to generate mana and allows the production of the Draconian Elder. Generate mana is the same as merchandise, but for mana. The storehouse will give us an extra 100 people per turn. This is one I think I'm going to go for. The Builder's Hall will give us an extra 20 production per turn. And also allows us the Builder and the Settler. So I'll go for this after the Storehouse. Because we have deactivated Founding Cities, and we have very few cities on the map, Builders are going to be our bread and butter so we can encapsulate other uh, resource structures on the map. Settlers can still be recru recruited, but you can't build cities with them. You can only rebuild raised structures. The laboratory will increase our research income. Also gives us that uh, seek knowledge ability, which is the knowledge version of merchandise, and building is the you know population version of merchandise. Um, and in case you don't know, it gives you an extra fifty percent of that whatever resource, so extra fifty percent people per turn. Uh, let's see. We'll go for the storehouse uh, because we want those extra people. We want to grow ASAP. And then that will give us extra production. So this takes five turns. If we were a village, we take four. If we were a city, we take three, maybe less. Okay. I think we are ready to end this turn. Two turns we got our scouts, and wisps are, in my opinion, the best in the game. Best scouting unit in the game. Uh, you're on zero. You can't do anything. You can't do anything. Uh, okay. I'm hitting escape to close these um, because I'm always afraid of accidentally moving my army. It's left click. But, uh, yeah, I always confuse my left and right clicks. Okay. Escape and WASD are pretty much the only hotkeys I use. I have a terrible tendency to double escape and bring up the menu. So you might see that quite a few times in these videos. Uh, I don't think there's anything we need to cover in this. I've already done the surrender in the previous video. Let's end the turn and uh, keep on moving. So... Okay, so you can see just on the edge of the fog of war here, this is a, a um, elevator, a lift, uh, entrance or an exit, uh, whatever you want to call it, to another plane, uh, so to the surface. Now we know we have no underground levels, so it's definitely going to take us to the surface. Sometimes this can be really hard to see, so if our unit was just one tile over, we would barely be able to see this. Zoom out to the cloth map, that would be a lot easier to differentiate. Um, yeah, if I see any other structures on my movements, I shall um, zoom out so you can see what I'm talking about. Alright, let's keep on moving. Uh, thing up here. Oh, there is. Okay, 
So you see these uh, wee white lines? That's the exact same as this. So if we zoom out, you can just see that corner so much easier than those white that glow. So now we know there's another elevator here. I call them elevators, a lot of people just call them caves, cave entrances. Uh, okay. So let's continue moving on with our scouts. We want to really see as much of this map as possible before we really commit ourselves to any one area. Um, oh, okay, there's a bridge. I wonder where that leads to. Uh, I suppose we'll go north and we can maybe lead over here. Uh, we don't have to do any backtracking. But you really want to prioritize your movement points. Um, it could be a brigand camp and that could lead to some dirty shenanigans on our uh, capital. But I'm sure it's not um, so close to the edge of the map. It's probably a tomb. And um, they're the things that are typically on the edges of the maps. Now then, I think we're ready to end our turn again. Fantastic. Alright. Uh, also, note here if any auto combat. There we go, that wee icon. That's the. Oh, Jesus, our uh, ally has lost the battle. And um, what we just saw there was the AI doing some combat in the background of the game. They did did the entire fight um, within a, a second. And if you see the fight, it's actually a pretty big fight between uh, her, oh, she lost her hero, she's gonna be in the void, L probably lost this guy too, because they have a survivor and they, you didn't flee. Um, or did you? No, you didn't, okay. But you did win another battle. Oh, you came in, okay, so you got some units. You got the Draconian Raptor and the Goblin Warg. So this is a dungeon. When you uh, defeat the residents, you free the prisoners in the dungeon and they will join your empire. We've researched Wisp, fantastic. So we can now scout. We've unlocked the next unit in the uh, Sorcerer uh, unit chain. Uh, it's Produce Apprentice. Now I'm not really going to go for that because we don't have any combat spells. Uh, we're going to go for this one. Uh, so basically if you look at the icons, this is an empire upgrade. Uh, so that's the uh, pillars. Uh, this one here is a spell, a strategic spell, and these ones are combat spells. It's ones with swords through them. And Magic Fist is a damaging spell, so we'll go for that, and we'll check it out in four turns. We're on 22 minutes, guys, so we've got maybe 8, 10 minutes left. Um, okay, so we just got scouts. Let's cast that. Now look at the mana at the top. We've got 89. It costs 40 mana. That comes out of our mana immediately. But our casting points are still at 20. So you pay the mana cost as soon as you start casting. We can abort this and get it all back. Nothing is committed until we end our turn. Uh, but we do want to keep that going. And then uh, the casting points will come out when we summon it. We may have a battle next turn, but it doesn't really matter. Because we have no combat spells. So even if we have no casting points, it doesn't hurt us much. Let's keep it going. Let's see, um, also, yeah, so this guy, we've got pretty big sight radius here, and one of our guys must have night vision. Basically, when you're underground, um, night vision, there we go. When you're underground, your vision decreases by two. Let's turn on the hex grid. So as you can see, we can see one, two, three, four hexes. Uh, our scout can only see two hexes on the surface. Yeah, our ally can see one, two, three, four, five hexes. That's quite a few. When your guys must be able to have something special. Yeah, so they can see five hexes. Uh, underground, you can only see two. Uh, let's check out this guy. So he can only see two as well. Um, but with night vision, you get that extra two, and you've got this huge. Oh, brigand camp. Okay, that was a little bit of a uh, interruption. Brigand camps are spawners. Now, see this army guarding it? Uh, brigand camps will spawn more of these at set intervals. Uh, let's go bring our guys over there. Um, so, next turn, turn after, maybe every 10 15 turns, it will spawn another group of uh, units, and you are at war with these independents. Uh, so, they, they will come down and take your city if you're not careful, which is why I was worried about there being one across that bridge at the bottom. Next turn, we will spawn a unit. Uh, at our leader and come and take this location. Basically when you destroy it, it is a treasure site so you can get items, uh, units, gold, all that sort of thing. Um, okay, so let's speed up our turns. We're on 24 minutes here guys. So, well, 
I really should get to the surface ASAP because we are draconians. We don't have uh, underground movement. Uh, we are we are hindered underground. It costs more for us. Uh, maybe you'll have it underground movement. No. Okay. I'm sure we'll get one eventually. Mm, end our turn. No. Got you to go. Okay, so we can see that bridge just went somewhere here. Uh, maybe we can even see... Yeah, okay, that's just a tomb, I think. You can see it in the fog. No, we can't. Okay. Let's end our turn. We're running out of time rapidly. Oh, okay. So as I said, spawned an army. They even got a tier 2, a berserker. So this is going to be quite a challenge. Now, this is a very um, underplayed tactic. You don't see it very often. You can only spawn your unit... Uh, around a friendly city or a hero. So here, uh, where it's green, uh, or around your city. Okay? Can't place it outside or too far away from anything. So if I were to spawn this now, I would have to move my unit all the way up here with the army. That's a waste of movement points, guys. Move them up and now spawn them. Full movement points. Alrighty then. Now notice this army can't reach, and uh, we'd have to wait a turn or attack with our scout to get in there. And Age of Wonders 3 features this uh, adjacent hex rule. Basically, uh, oh, I guess I can show it on the next turn. So we'll attack. Now this is the uh, target hex. Everything around that hex will be participating in the battle if they are allied or controlled by either side. So if I had moved my wisp to the other side of the camp, they'd still be participating, they don't need to be next to my army or anything like that. Um, Alright, let's see. Um, you can retreat at no cost, Doesn't uh, it doesn't affect you. Alright, let's see. Yes, yeah, indeed. This is going to be a fortified camp. Uh, four minutes, we can, three minutes, we can do this in three minutes. I'm trying to keep all these videos around 30 minutes so they're easier for me to edit. Also guys, sorry about the audio. I know it's uh, pretty poor. I'm using an extremely cheap microphone. I do plan on borrowing one from the university I'm studying at. Uh, will should hopefully increase the audio uh, quality. I'm trying to fix everything up in uh, Audacity because I'm sitting next, right next to my computer, and it is a beast, an utter Goliath. Um, okay, so I said earlier that the Wisp is the best scout. Now, where do you see its stats? 16 health. That is pitiful. But, 60% physical protection, now that is immense, physical protection is uh, a huge modifier, and 100% shock protection, uh, the physical protection comes from the incorporeal stat, and it's floating, and it has true, style, true sight. Floating means every type of terrain you only move, only costs you 4 movement points, including mountains, underground, lava, whatever. Uh, but you cannot move over uh, certain certain objects, so you can't like you don't have tunneling, for example. Um, true sight also means that any units that are hiding in the in the trees uh, will be visible to this unit. So that's why I say it's the best scout. But it's also semi useful in battle. So fears it can be anywhere on the map, and structure shield uh, static shield sorry is is just amazing. So any unit that attacks this creature in melee will take 5 electric damage, they will also have a chance of being shocked. They can also fly, uh, float over these walls straight away. Now, immediately think, these guys are, every single one of them are ranged, and you gotta think, how do we want them to, uh, they're all gonna attack us behind these walls, rather, so we wanna think, what are our expendable units? And our expendable units really are the crushers, um, and our hatchlings. So we'll put our leaders behind those units, so we can keep them for a little bit longer, because they are some of the best units in the game, especially when you get them high level. Alright, now let's check out the spells from this guy. I really shouldn't, but uh, I'll let you see the first three spells that a Warlord has. Berserk is probably what we'll cast. Basically, we'll drop it down on a unit, then he'll go insane, the enemy AI won't have control over him anymore, and he will attack the closest unit, whether it's one of mine or one of their own. Last stand uh, is a buff, uh, a unit enchantment is the technical term. Put it on a unit, it'll get plus two defense, first strike, meaning whenever the unit with the buff is attacked, that unit will attack first. 
and pole arm, uh, we can deal extra damage against cavalry and I think flying units. Uh, Shout of Intimidation will panic an enemy unit. Basically, uh, 44. Basically, they will try to run off the map or run away from our army. Okay, so notice the dwarves. We have 40% because they have increased resistance. We can't use it on the Berserker because they are immune. 44%. We'll put it on this guy straight in front of the walls. Draconian or Goblins? Draconians have more health. Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll stick it on the Draconians because they have more health and there's an increased chance of it passing. And they will be. Oh, yo! Okay, so they're going to attack one of these guys this turn. They we'll probably will do some immense damage as well. Hopefully, they go for the Goblins. They'll prob they could wipe them out. We'll give them a helping hand. We're at the half hour mark now, guys. We'll end this fight ASAP. Um, yeah, we really want them to go for the goblins. Okay. Oh, I did so much damage. Let's end this turn. Here it goes. And Frap is making things lag a little bit because I'm not using my external hard drive. It's all saving directly onto my internal. Um, so we did some damage there. That was nice. They attacked their uh, OP unit, the uh, Berserkers. Then I down to ooh, 27. That was fantastic. A lot of damage. These guys are uh, brutal. So they overwhelm. So anything with a uh, shield, they'll deal extra damage. And they're draconian. They heal fast. They're crippled. So where they go? Where they go? Where they go? Where they go? Um, being crippled means they've got less movement points, so they couldn't get very far. They do deal 13 damage. 14 defense, that's immense for a tier 2, and they have 52 health, so they are they are a, a proper bruiser, you know, that kind of class. So let's teleport, oh, we can't really get anywhere good from here, uh, let's move over here, we'll just fly in, whoops, fly in, and we can't teleport, not enough action points, Tele fears must cost 2, let's find out. Inherent. It doesn't say anything about the, the action point cost. It must cost more than we have. So let's move in and so destroy this. Oh, also notice our... Yeah, they critted. So our unit has uh, got very high morale. That's increased the chance for a crit, dealing more damage because we're on preferred terrain. This must be Barons. It's definitely not Lava. Let's see. You know, we're not going to attack him because he's still kind of on our side. These guys are closer to him than our guys are. Uh, let's see, we're going and destroy this part. Uh, our leader has direct line of sight. Uh, I'm going to finish this fight ASAP, guys. So we can see the rewards. Um, let's orientate you inwards. Uh, good, you're already facing away. It's hard to tell these guys. I'm facing backwards. Okay. Urkan the Hacker. That's an awesome name. <laughs> bada boom, bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. I'll go for you. Die, goblins. Wow, and let's see, that's what we're talking about. Ragdoll, you know, that's blow away. And if there was a hole here, a crater, uh, or whatever, they'd fall down that hole and disappear. That's pretty cool. Uh, between guard, good, no one else. End our turn. Let's increase movement. Turn. Okay, so they wiped out another unit for us, and they've taken very little damage. Uh, such a kick-ass unit. Alright, so they're really going for my leader now. we got to be careful. Uh, I think we can wipe these two out next turn. Alright, so let's phase behind these guys. Right-click. And now we get a free attack. And we'll only have one. Uh, oh, they will retaliate, though. Uh, they shouldn't. But anyway. Ah, uh, they resisted. Okay. Uh, bring you guys over. Wipe you out. Bada boom, baby. And wipe you out. And they are not um, susceptible to the um, spell anymore. So we'll flank. And then we'll bring our leader in. Maybe we'll bring you around. Oh, you must have you crippled. Uh, okay. So you come on over here. Destroy them. Okay. So guys, leave some comments down below for what you would like to see in the next video. Basically, I plan on expanding the empire, getting out a couple of builders, 
getting some more resources, building up a huge army, beating the crap out of all the other players. And we can end our turn. Um, thanks for bearing with me for these videos. Um, I know the audio isn't great. Oh, my bloody hero died. Okay. I'm not paying enough attention. Um, so, yeah. Um, I can't go. Let's end this. Right. Come on. Oh, and I lost the scout too. Um, so, basically, when your hero die, when your leader dies, you get an entire empire wide debuff. You can no longer do any research. Um, yeah, you can't cast any spells from your leader either. So we'll stick this in auto, stick it in super speed. There's only one guy left, so it's going to be super fast. Um, yeah, so leave some comments down below what you want to see in the next video. If there's anything I haven't covered well enough or anything you think needs to be more covered, uh, let me know. Um, okay, so we'll talk about the rewards first, and then we shall uh, end the video. So we won. Here's the rewards. We got a lost locket of love. Or locket of lost love. Uh, okay, so pretty much that gives us 100% uh, holy protection. I don't think our hero will have uh, immunity to being mind controlled. Nope, good. That's fantastic for you. And we got a free unit. This guy. Okay. And um, we'll move you guys over here. Alright, so we'll end it here, guys. And um, we'll pick it up on the next one. 36 minutes. I think I'm getting better at this whole YouTube thing. Brilliant. Um, so, yeah, next time we'll start expanding. We'll keep going over here uh, to the flanks. We'll try to get a little bit over here done. We'll spawn some more scouts. Get over here. Try to group up with our ally at some point who is getting annihilated. Have they got anything on the world map? No. Oh, there's nothing left. G boss. Okay. Yeah, brilliant. So, see you guys in the next one.